Welcome to the online Sunday school service. I'm Irene Waluita Nyambe and I'm your presenter. Today's topic is Easter focusing on the blood of Jesus. Not to worry, our teacher for today is going to explain what that is. Before we begin, let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the breath of life. Father God, you know about to learn, to pray and answer to me. Help us understand and put everything that we learn into practice. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Right now, we're going to have a short Bible story. And after that, we'll praise God. Enjoy. God's Story. Easter. So part of God's story is about Easter, and it begins like this. You might know Easter as the Sunday a ginormous bunny hides chocolate inside plastic eggs. But Easter is really all about how much Jesus loves us and how God sent him to rescue us. Remember how the Jews, God's special family, were waiting for a king to come rescue them? Well, Jesus was the king, and this rescue was the whole reason he came to earth. God had already rescued the Jews once before, but this time it was going to include everyone. So one night, Jesus told his friends about the rescue. Exciting, right? But talking about this rescue was sad. That's because Jesus was going to rescue the world by dying. Kids, every mean or bad thing we do deserves punishment. By dying, Jesus took our punishment. Lots of things in life have good parts and bad parts. And just like candy bars are mostly good, as long as you brush your teeth after you eat one, this story is a really good one. Anyway, talking about the rescue made Jesus sad since he didn't really want to die. Thankfully, we can talk to God when we're sad, so Jesus took a few friends into a garden to pray. In the garden, a guy named Judas, who people thought was Jesus' friend, came with some people to help arrest Jesus. Peter, one of Jesus' true friends, was so mad he cut off a servant's ear with his sword. But Jesus didn't want his friends to hurt others, so Jesus healed the ear and let them arrest him. Then Jesus was taken to trial. One of the most powerful men in the city, Pontius Pilate, wanted to let Jesus go. But many of the people wanted Jesus to die. They didn't believe he was the Son of God or any kind of king. Even after all the miracles Jesus did, like healing sick people and making blind people see, they didn't believe in him. The people were so mad, they started yelling, kill him! So Pontius Pilate let the soldiers take Jesus. The soldiers made fun of the idea that Jesus was a king. They put a crown of thorns on his head and nailed him to a cross. Many people watched, but not all of them wanted Jesus to die. His mother and close friends were there too. Just imagine how they must have felt. Once Jesus was up on the cross, the sun stopped shining for three whole hours in the middle of the day. But those soldiers kept right on making fun of him. They said, if you're really God's son, why don't you just call on some angels to save you? Jesus could have called on angels to save him, but he loved us so much that he wanted to rescue us. So instead, he prayed to God, Father, I place my life into your hands. At that moment, Jesus died. When he died, the soldiers who had just killed him realized he really was the Son of God. Later, Jesus was put into a tomb and a big rock blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends thought that was the end. But three days later, God sent an angel to roll the stone away. Don't worry, Jesus could get out on his own. The angel moved the rock so everybody else could see the tomb was empty. Jesus' friends were the first to stop by the tomb. The angel said, He has risen! which is another way of saying, Jesus is alive. Nobody could believe it. Jesus took our punishment and then proved he really is the Son of God by coming back to life. Now, if we choose to follow Jesus, God forgives us for all the wrong things we do because Jesus already took our punishment. And that's the story of Easter. But that's not all there is. Here's a quick version of what happened after the angel told the good news. Jesus' friends got scared. Jesus appeared to them. They saw his scars. It was really him. Now they could share the good news too. Jesus appeared to more than 500 people. He went back up to heaven. And the best part? He promised to come back someday for everybody who follows him. And all that is a part of God's story. you have called
called you by name, you were my dear night, for I have redeemed you, I've called you by name, you were mine. If you're scared of the dark, I'll be your guide of light. If the floodwaters come, they won't wash you aside. If you're caught in a storm, I'm a safe place to hide. understood or learned something from the Bible story. And praise along. Now, we're going to have COVID sensitization and fun time. Enjoy! Hi. I'm here to remind you to wash your hands thoroughly. Make sure you maintain social distancing. Make sure you cough or sneeze in a flex elbow. Don't forget to sanitize your hands. And finally, don't forget to mask up when you're in public places. Hello boys and girls, I'm so glad you could join us once again. Welcome to today's quiz recap session of last week's lesson. Our first question is, who put Jesus to death? Who put Jesus to death? The Jewish priests and Roman leaders that did not like the power he had? The answer is the Jewish priests and Roman leaders that did not like the power had. Our second question is, why didn't he save himself? Why didn't Jesus save himself? The correct response to this question is, he knew he had to sacrifice his life to save us from our sin. Question number three. How old was Jesus when he died? How old was Jesus when he died? Awesome, you're absolutely right. Jesus was 33 years old when he was crucified. Our fourth question is What happened to Jesus after he was crucified? What happened to Jesus after he was crucified? Jesus was buried in a garden in a tomb and after three days, God raised him from death. Yes. So, Jesus was buried in a tomb, in a garden. And after three days, Jesus was raised from the dead. Our final question is, who helped Jesus carry the cross? Who helped Jesus carry the cross? Simon of Cyrene helped Jesus carry the cross. I hope you got most of the questions right, most of the answers right. And um, we'll see you next week. And God bless you. you guys had fun right now we are going to have our memory vest and after that we'll have wash hello boys and girls today's memory verse is from the book of ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13 but in christ jesus you who were once far away have been brought near to the blood of christ
That was amazing. Finally, we begin our lesson. Enjoy your lesson. Hi there. How are you doing? I am so happy to be here. So many good things are happening. I hope you're having a wonderful time. Today we're going to talk about something really important. My name is Anko Malik and I'll be taking you through the lesson. Now, what is this important thing that we're going to be talking about today? It's Easter, right? Now, what is Easter? Easter is a time that we all come back to remember and commemorate and think about what Jesus Christ did for us. Think about God's love for you and God's love for me. It is God's love that we're here to celebrate over this wonderful Easter period. I hope you're having fun. Now, I'm going to take you through this. Um, I hope it'll be real quick. If not, hang tight. Imagine you're about to be shot dead. Somebody's holding a gun and you're there. And this person, just when they pull the trigger, somebody comes and jumps in front of you and they take that bullet for you. They take that punishment for you. They, they, they die so that you shouldn't die. Every single day, that particular day that that happens that you were supposed to be shot dead and you were not shot dead somebody else took that bullet for you every time that day comes you want to think about it you want to say thank you that you are alive you want to say thank you that you are breathing and it is because of that person who jumped in front of that bullet that was supposed to kill you but killed them instead that you are alive today the same thing that jesus christ did we were supposed to take the punishment. He took the punishment for us. We were supposed to be the ones who were supposed to have died. He died for us. And so when Easter comes, we need to sit back, think about what Jesus Christ did for us because we were supposed to have died. And yet he came and stood in front and took that bullet for us. We were supposed to not be breathing at all. He came and he took that for us. We're supposed to have been punished. He came and took the punishment for us. And that is why we are so excited about Easter. And that is why we are so excited about what Jesus Christ keeps doing in our lives. We are so excited about what Jesus Christ keeps revealing to us. And, and that this time around, we shouldn't be punished because he already took the punishment. As we continue talking about Easter, we are going to focus on the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. What does the blood mean? What does the blood of Jesus Christ signify? What power is there in the blood of Jesus Christ? What does it mean when, when we hear the hymn or we hear people singing, what can walk away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus and others sing there is power power wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb what does it mean what what power is there in the blood of Jesus Christ and that's what we're going to be talking about today so to start this off we're going to start with two stories well one story in the Old Testament and the other story in the New Testament. So the first story is going to come from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 1 to 30. But I'm going to read up to verse 12 and then I'll talk about the rest. And then from there, we're going to go to another scripture. And that is Matthew chapter 26, verse 17, all the way to 30. But same with Matthew chapter uh, 26, I will only read up to a certain point. So let's start with Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor. 
having taken into account the number of people that there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the ship or the gods. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. The night that they are to eat the lamb roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made, from, made without yeast. The night they are to eat the lamb roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over a fire with the head and the legs and internal organs. Do not leave any of it until tomorrow. If some of it is left until morning, you will burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your clock turned into your belt, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hands, eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On the same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when you see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Now, this story, we have a situation where Egypt is, is not doing according to what God wants and they're worshiping these gods and, and they're doing all kinds of things and God is unhappy generally with Egypt and they're not letting the, the, the Israelites go. And, and, and so at this point, God is demonstrating something to the Egyptians. And so he says, I'm going to pass through Egypt and I'm going to strike down every firstborn of every household and every animal. I'm going to kill them, okay? But if you do this, I will pass over. I will not kill the firstborn in that house. Get a lamb, okay? It should be one year old. You know, prepare it and roast it over a fire in the night and eat it. And, you know, if, you do, if, if, it's, if it's too big for you, invite your neighbor so that you can finish it together. And then as you slaughter this lamb, get some of the blood of the lamb and put it on the goalpost of the house or the door frame of the house of this There's door frame this side and the door frame this side and also on the top and when i come in the night to punish egypt and i see the blood when i see the blood on your door i will not kill the firstborn in that house i will pass over that's what god said and that's what god did a long time ago and and and, and when this happened Night came and the Israelites did as God instructed and all of them, their firstborns were all saved. Well, the rest of the Egyptians God punished. Each one of the household which did not do that, God punished them. Now, fast forward. Years and years later, years and years and years and years and years and boom, boom, Jesus Christ. Okay? And then we go to the, to the, the next scripture which is Matthew chapter 26, and we'll start reading from verse 17. Now, this is now Jesus here, okay? He says, On the very first day of the festival of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations to eat the Passover? Now, remember the Passover is from the story that I just told you from a long time ago in Egypt, so they celebrated this, and we're still celebrating this. He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, 
The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if, I had not, if he had not been born. Then Jesus, then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely, do you mean me, Rabbi? Jesus answered, You have said so. And while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to Mount of Olives. Jesus here is saying that his blood was going to be the ultimate sacrifice. His blood was going to be given so that no other blood should be shed again. You see, all along, they had to keep killing lambs and goats and all these animals for their sins to be forgiven until Jesus Christ came and he said, I am going to give my blood and it will be the last blood, the ultimate blood to be given for the forgiveness of sins. And because Jesus Christ died on the cross and gave his blood for us, our sins have now been forgiven. We no longer have to go and kill gods and sheep and all these animals for us to have our sins forgiven. So this blood that Jesus Christ talks about is his blood. His blood that he was shed on the cross of Calvary. And it is around this time when it's Easter that that blood was shed. Now, the blood of Jesus, what does it do for us? What does the blood of Jesus Christ do for us? What is, the, what is in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ? Now, there are a lot of things that the blood of Jesus Christ can do for us. And I'm going to go through a number of them. So number one, the blood of Jesus Christ brings healing. So when you are unwell, you can plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon you and you will be healed. And that's why there's a scripture that says, by his stripes you were healed. It is because of that blood of Jesus Christ. Number two, we use the blood of Jesus Christ to overcome Satan. So when we are covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, no bad thing, no devil can come and overcome us. No one can touch us. Nothing harmful can come near us. What else does the blood of Jesus Christ do? I have already talked about it. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us of our sins. Because for a while we were sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. And because of that blood, our sins are washed. And that's why even if they were as red as crimson, even if they were so red, our sins were so dark, the blood of Jesus Christ can wash them to be as well. To be, can wash them and then we can be clean as white as snow. What else does the blood of Jesus Christ do? The blood of Jesus Christ brings peace. The blood of Jesus Christ also makes us part of God's family. The blood of Jesus Christ protects us. The blood of Jesus Christ reminds us of God's love for us. It reminds us that when we were still sinners, his blood came and washed us. Because he died and his blood was shed, we are now free from sin. The last thing that I want to talk about that the blood of Jesus Christ does is that the blood of Jesus Christ brings peace. Now, when we have broken friendship, we have broken relationship, things are not going so well. The blood of Jesus Christ brings peace because Jesus Christ died for us that we may have peace. He died for us and forgave, our, uh, forgave us of our sins so that we can also forgive others. So when some people hurt us, some people do bad things to us, some people don't like us, 
you know what? God asked us to forgive them because he forgave us. And he forgave us on the cross of Calvary when he shed his blood. So, let's go to the memory verse of the week. Now, the memory verse of the week is from Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. What does Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 say? It says, But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. You and I were far from God. You and I were going to take the punishment. You know, the way God was going to punish the children of Israel, you and uh, the children of Egypt, the way God was going to punish the children of Egypt, in the same way we were going to be punished. And then Jesus Christ came and took the punishment in our place. His blood was shed so that we don't get punished. He took the punishment. And remember when we were opening, I said, imagine somebody is about to shoot you and someone comes and steps in front of you and they take the bullet for you. That is what Jesus Christ did. And that is the power that is there in the blood that was shed on the cross when Jesus Christ died for you, when Jesus Christ died for me. Now, I want you to say this prayer. This prayer is going to help you understand what the blood of Jesus Christ can do for you. This prayer that I would like you to say after me is the prayer that you will say that will help you be at a place where you are the one who is supposed to take the punishment but then Jesus Christ comes in front and takes the punishment for you. Jesus Christ comes in front and takes the bullet for you. This prayer is going to help you understand the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. So I will need you to say this prayer from your heart. Say it after me, but I need you to say it with meaning like it's coming from your heart. Say, Dear God, Thank you for what you did for me and everyone here on earth by sending your dear son, Jesus, to die for me so that my friendship with you is healed. Come into my heart, Jesus. Make it brand new and make me your child forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you say this prayer after me, you can enjoy it the wonderful blessings that God has for you. You enjoy the great forgiveness that comes. You enjoy living in safety. You will not have to take that punishment anymore because Jesus Christ has taken the punishment for you because Jesus Christ has shed his blood for you to be safe, for you to have peace, for you to have life and life eternal. Now enjoy Easter. Tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Tell them that Jesus Christ came and stood in front of them and took the punishment of them. And that is the power that you find in Jesus Christ. If you say that prayer and you need help to understand what has happened uh, to you, please visit us at North Mid Assembly of God Church or post in the comment section. We're going to have somebody call you and we'll have somebody hold your hand and make you understand what you have done. At this point, I'm going to be saying bye. Always, I know time, time flies. Oh my God, oh my God, time flies. But I'm happy I was here. I'm happy that I shared the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And next time you pray, just say the blood of Jesus Christ is upon this and everything's going to be fine. My name is Uncle Malik. God bless you. I'm going to see you next time. Happy Easter! Yeah.